and good morning. We are getting set up here today. Have a beautiful Wednesday. It's kind of cloudy today, though. Still nice. Trying to get the little windows set up and it kept avoiding me, reminded me of one of those old school little click me buttons. You get close and you can never click it. go Let's see, so today, integration tests. What we're going to be working on is we load up server here, server main. Server main has a couple of pieces in it. Just one moment. So server main ties things together. It has it starts up the database stuff, starts up the uh, connection streams, ties together auth, character selection, game master, and what we're going to be doing is setting up some integration tests such that we do not set up the TCP server. Okay. TCP server is going to be tested all on its own. But everything between TCP server and database server will kind of be testing all together integration tests. So figuring out how to set that up in a way that makes sense here in main. And then how to be able to efficiently test that or to, to be able to easily test that. Because if you can write easy tests, you have tests. It's hard to write tests. You tend not to have tests. I think server should be broken up into a couple parts. Uh, library. Let's organize this a bit. So I think what I want to do is be able to have some sort of server lib 
which I pass these channels into. So where we end up passing these things in, I think that's where I, I want to split this. Still going to need a connection state store, all of that stuff. Where did I do that? Where did I have both a lib and uh, main app? I think it was in one of the other um, other binaries. Is it in forge, forge lib, forge bin main. Yeah. So here we just start up forge. This is still using Actix. So we'll be doing the same thing. Let's look at the forges. We're going to Tomal. Yeah, there we go. Let's set up the same thing for server. What do we call this? Server? <laughs> I think that's what it's called right now. Oh, legacy. Close all the buffers, come back over here. Make that bin directory. See. Oh. Okay, Cosmos is empty. Everything used to be in here. Not much left. Metrics, Cosmos, ECS, Game Master. That looks better. Do we even use those macros? No, we don't. Yeah, let's clean that up as we go along. What else? Game types. Should be gone. Hmm. Random UUID stuff. I remember it took me a long time to figure that out before. All right, that's what well, that's more like it. Everything should still work. Ah. 
pantallas. What is in utils? Utils got we got rid of utils. Server bin main. Let's commit that. Then we'll set up the library, the lib file, lib.rs, and start migrating elements into that. Then we'll set up integration tests, see if we can start testing those. Sham, this is a feature. It's not really a bug. What is this for? This is for kind of the main server, isn't it? for integration tests. There we go. When I finally got the, uh, the Oracle line running on this, I tried running it with um, Docker. And oh my goodness, that took an hour to actually have it run like fire up that Docker image, have it prep all the cargo stuff, do all the builds, and then run. My my machine was cooking through that whole thing. I was, I was not plugged in either. So it took about 40% of the battery. However, I got it set up on an integration machine. I can run Linux. And that ended up with... Uh, Said that I had 18 and a half percent of the code base with tests. Not bad. But I think that's gonna that's gonna change. That's kind of like the anchor point for this. Alright. So now that we have that. Let's resize some of these panes. Resize pane dash X. Let's go 100 there. We could probably do 90. But it's nice though. Cargo launch dash X. Test. I don't have like a cargo WT. Okay. 
So server lib currently empty. Server main. Which pieces are we gonna pull out of here? I think run auth, these kind of run functions down here definitely need to come out. That's more like it. What else? Better panic. Nope. You stay up there. Metrics. Ooh, this is a good one. I think we don't set this up for our tests. Fine. I think database should be passed in. We're not going to set this up. Spiner, though, could be in there. Spiner just uses database. Action state. Let's move you closer to where you're actually run. Used. Okay, this is going to stay. Well, hold on. What is this? This piece of renew. This is going to wrap stream multiplexer. So yes, we are not going to, to pull this in, but we will create our own channels. I'll have to create this in the tests as well. Basically, this is what we're going to be mocking out here. What about Spiner? Who needs Spiner down below? Yeah. I'm going to move Spiner then as well. And database stuff. Okay. I think this stuff here is going to go. It'll be part of the library. This stuff up above isn't. Need to run inside, um, grab some water, do a bio break. We'll be right back. Well, that's not the right text, is it?
And we're back. Let's see. Connection state store stuff. All of this. And move. Including the database stuff. All spiner and down. I think here's kind of the delimiter. About here. I mean, some of these other run functions. Let's see, did I get them all? Looks like it. All right. What do we call this? Server core, server. Could be a module. Library, this should probably just be a function, shouldn't it? Let's see, I want to look at some inspiration. Let's look at was it Forge again? structures an element I guess we could create a structure for this toss these on some unsuspecting structure we'll just have some start function start run whatever it is Rename it later. Actually, run. Maybe because we have all these runs. We need a number of elements here. We pass in, and that should define what's needed. Okay going to cheat real quick take all of these it's easier to just put them in there and let the compiler say hey this isn't used than to do it the other way let's go from the bottom up B. quick fix on that Fix there. Quick fix. All right. I think those are grouped correctly. And what about down here? Did that get rid of most of these? Almost. I can't find outgoing packets in this scope. That's strange, why not? Oh, I see. It's a structure that we created. The type alias. 
secret is, is this used in here? Nope, we'll move that. What else from down below? Any errors down here? Just checking the run functions. Those are good. The rest, rest here are going to be arguments that get passed in. Uh, DB concurrency, do we really have to do that here? We could pass that in. Is there a benefit to passing that in? Yeah, I think I think DB concurrency is actually going to go away because here when we look at Spiner concurrency, and we look to see what it's actually used for inside of Spiner. I think that's going to be used for the um, the semaphore. We're actually getting rid of the sooner never system. Now yeah, that's only used in Sooner Never. And I think we're getting rid of that due to the, the new way that our back pressure works. Hmm. Should we just strip out this? No. That's a that's future maze problem. Pass it in for now. Oh, what is its type? Did I create a funny type for that? Close that buffer. Back to server main. The U32. Okay. Database. That's going to be of that type. Database, DB, we need constraint. Metric sender. Wow. How did it know to do that? Do that again. It's from the language server, it knows. That's amazing. That is amazing. All right, so now we need the auth stream, the outgoing packets. Let's do outgoing first. Uh, I don't know. Do I want in then out? Or TX then RX? Do TX and RX stuff. I would have loved to see the same thing again. Oh, and it knows it needs to be mutable. Look at that. Wow. All right, now we also need the auth stream. Oh, it's not going to do this one. It's a type on that. That's uh, MPSC. this okay all stream going packets oh Yeah, the name was wrong. Hmm. 
to stream. What about this GM stream TX? Well, we should be creating Game Master in here. Game Master shouldn't be created outside. Okay, now for the GM stream. Good, almost there. Where's Game Master? Hey, Carter, good morning. Actually, I wonder if there's another way that we can hide this sort of short circuit that we do. Funnel one MPSC stream into another. So we have the, the sort of short circuit internally. Not seeing where we created game master do we oh is that created inside of run game master it is oh, wonderful okay so let's work on doing the short circuit because we need basically we, we need our own sort of um well yes we need the channel that can send from the character selector to the game master because there is a case where they both have to use the packet and the character selection code actually has to enqueue it into the game master's queue. But I don't want the outside world of this function to understand that's going on, just the inside. Now in this case, GM stream game master. What is this? This is a MPSC receiver, so it's a bounded channel. Hmm. We don't really have a way to see what the outside put in terms of uh, constraints on this. And not constraints. I mean um, capacity on their channel. We could go and peek, or we just pass it in. Let's just pass it in, get the test running. It feels a little weird that the test would have to know about this. So I, I don't want to add one more layer of buffer to the GM stream. Because if somebody chooses that we should only have you know, 16 packets available in any of these at a time, and then we double this one, this it just fills up, doesn't it? Oh, look, we actually parse them any faster. What did we actually choose on the other side, though? 32? some arbitrary number. So we definitely don't want them unbounded. I think that we can actually go between one or the other. Let's check the docs on this. I think in Tokyo, 
or a I think what this is going to lead us into futures actually so we could have a send half and a receive half as we feed into another stream where would that be in the documentation that would be inside of Rx or receiver. So receiver implements stream. Stream. You look at stream ext Tokyo. Chain isn't what we want. Combine two into one. Train stream pushing all emitted values into a collection. No. Filter map fold. in Tokyo in futures futures also has a stream ext ah there it is forward you could forward this into something else and this here would be an MPSC sender Tokyo, PSC, sender. Does it have sync on it? Not the sync I want. All right, so let's not do that. I don't want to have two different types of streams in this. Not, not in that pipeline. Just keep it simple, pass that in. Let's verify that's correct. Good that it's gotten to the point of complaining about that. That's good. I think we just need it to be static, yes. Doesn't need to be mutable. Quick fix that. Now we'll call run on this library. It's got a server main. Ah, unused. Let's start at the top here. Fix that. actually refer to the server's library in this case so we treat it like a crate I think forge forge main yeah it's just kind of available not forge server run 
didn't even think about the return type on that. So DB concurrency, database, outgoing packets. Auth character GM stream. Auth character. And metrics. Okay, some of these need to be cloned, like this one. Actually, that one probably doesn't need to be cloned. Oh, neither of these. I think we are the last one we can take ownership of those. Interesting. How did Forge do it? Forge lib. We have different elements in here. And I have a start function, pub async function start. Pub async function run server lib. Let's check our cargo files again. Go for forge, which isn't currently wired up. Let's check Prometheus metrics then. Oh, interesting. Did I not do that for that? So Prometheus metrics has main that's right, because it is so simple. It's just a proxy. Go back to the server main. Is there something else that pulls server in server? Like there's something called server, like we're shadowing it. Forge colon colon start. You are Forge while well, you're at the binary in Forge. Use server. Does it have to be a dependency of itself? Forge cargo. Oh, default run. I forgot that. Not just those three places. Let's toss on the default run there.
Oh, this package name is Legacy. Not server. Is this the name of the library? Let's change it to that. There we go. Now, why is that asynchronous? Check that out. We do have some awaits in there. I don't think we're actually using any of that. I don't think it has to, because we're spawning tasks when we need them. This here probably doesn't need to be async. We don't have a return value. Not sure how I feel about that. Also, don't have a way of shutting these down other than dropping the other ends of the senders and receivers. I guess that's that's good enough. Just drop the other ends and then they shut themselves down. Yeah, and then another task. It's fine. Okay. Okay. So that builds. Let's see if this actually runs the game. If we can get into it, we go build. Oh, I forgot to I forgot to modify my script. I don't know if it found it. I don't know if this target is actually the same. There's something there. Okay, so we have lib legacy here. Okay. Maybe that's it. How big is that? 38 megs? Oh. Guess it's debug. Is the date correct on that March? Yeah, looks right. All right. All right, let's the client. Ta-da. And we can have Connor go stand in his puddle. Good. Disconnect the client. Goes away. Perfect, okay. So at this point we need to commit those and then get to the integration bits. To add server. If I should call it server or legacy. Probably just server, that's kind of the directory name. Even though the crate name is legacy, that feels really weird. For integration, go to server. 
Actually, I don't think I have, I have any integration libs in here. Integration test. Forget if the test directory goes right next to source. Start up another kernel. Whatever we do, cd source stream multiplexer. Ah, uh, yes, the test directory is right there. So, server. Okay, and then you can have modules for shared components of these things. If you needed to have multiple integration test files, you'd have a directory where you had shared components that could be used in each one of those. Each one of those is essentially its own application. Hold on just one moment. Dog is flipping out. You're back. I don't know. Something's out there. All right. Go for integration tests. Should probably put these in different files. Setup's going to be interesting for these as well. One thing I'm not certain how to do yet is fake the DB bits. Currently, if we go look at database, ah, here's our trait for this. Apparently we have a lot of pass through on this and we could override specific things. If somebody's logging in. Hmm. Interesting. Let's go back to server main. Let's just start creating it. Server tests. What do we call this one first? Integration or something else?
to what are we going to test first? Oh, maybe we'll create a linked ed test. Fairly straightforward. Or a login test, we could do that. Let's do linked ed. I think that'll be easier because we won't have as much of the database stuff to do. decorate that this is a test. Looks like just use normal normal markers. You could say is a test like that. I'm actually using the Tokyo runtime, so I'm using Tokyo test. LinkedIn, Tokyo, should be async. Set that up to watch the tests. How to kind of bootstrap this. We don't actually want metrics channel. Here, I think I have a utility bias oh, yes, dev null. So we'll use that. Get rid of that. Good. I wonder if we need something like that for this. No, we'll probably have to use outgoing RX and test that we're receiving packets on it. Two streams for, for the incoming data. That is incorrect. Three streams. Close that file. There we go. Oh, type annotations needed. Oh, yeah, that'll come. So in this case, we want to call TCP server run, not TCP server, not that. You basically want something like this with our own database. It's interesting that it starts up and it shuts down. We don't actually have to do anything. That actually worked. And one test basically started everything and shut it all down. It shuts down because these go out of scope at the end of this function. 
to each one of those loops. Nice. That's good. Now let's fake a connection. To fake a connection, we have to provide, let's see, what would happen first? The auth stream TX receive a join notice. I think we should probably put all this stuff in some utility function. Just return the uh, the stream info. I just have some giant tuple that comes out that we can use. Instead of having to set this thing up over and over and over again. Just call it setup. That's going to be a tuple. Put that in there. All right, so we're going to need all of the TXs. So in this case, we're going to have auth stream TX. Character stream TX, GM stream TX. So we can send to each one of those portions of the server. We will also want to know what data is coming back out. And metrics go nowhere. And this we not, might need to pass in actually. Um, Oh dear. Yeah, we have to create that, that return type, don't we? You just like quick fix it for me? No quick fix actions available. That's too bad. All right, so easy way to build that up would be to look at server lib. So I take one of those. So I have auth stream sender and then it was character stream and then oh well we don't need those we don't need names on these it should probably be comments but eh, we'll see what else did we have we had and then just the outgoing packets. Okay, missing one more. That last one is the outgoing packets. Be very, very similar, except that's going to be a receiver. Okay. 
this. Yeah, the return type's wrong. Expected receiver of outgoing packets. Was found. Oh, found sender of outgoing packet packet. Okay, so first off, outgoing packet packet. It's not a result type. It looks like I gave the wrong one back. I should have done this one instead. That goes into each one of those. Who's anybody using that? Outgoing packets RX? No, nobody is. And that's the one we should be using. So we'll call setup instead. Let auth stream character stream gm stream outgoing equals setup. Yes, we know those aren't used yet, but I think that's going to make for having multiple tests much, much easier. Simulate a connection joining. Okay. Allstream dot send. And we need a join packet. This is going to be an incoming packet. Join? Channel join? I forget what we called it. Uh, not that style of incoming packet, unfortunately. That one. What's my documentation on that? Come on. All right, let's just go look. It's right over here. Stream connected with a stream ID. Okay. There it goes. And this will be a stream ID lucky number eight. Now borrow it as mutable. It's not declared as mutable. Oh, wow. Old friend is texting me. That's cool. Unused result. That's fine. Uh, we'll just unwrap that. We're inside of unit test land.
All right, so that passed. Actually, I'm curious. I want to see the, um, uh, what do we do for WT here? Cargo config WT runs ST, ST is test short with no capture, please. Oh, uh, WT. Watch tests. Now my buddy's on immunocompromisers. And he's off on the East Coast. He's basically all holed up. Um, he doesn't want to get sick. He said I'll kill him. Recognize option message format. Okay. Do we have to put that at the end then? Let's try again. There we go. And what's funny about this is it just doesn't emit anything. This doesn't. Because I would expect Tokyo and all these other things to get set up, have their logging going. At this point, we send that. That should basically simulate the connection and received. I think all we do right now is we dump those. We don't actually do anything with them. Connection joining. Huh. Well, this is this is neat because now I can just send packets to any one of those in any order. Let's rename this to off link dead. Shame disconnected. Oh, come on. Oh, that one's two. Oh, the reason. That's right. Disconnect reason. Is that public? That's good.
Interesting, but it looks like we actually have to do authentication to make this really work. Looks like we actually have to go through and do a lot more in order to get to where we want. Because while well, this was kind of a good setup, now we have to go past authentication through character selection. So in this case, we'll simulate a uh, connection joining. You know what, let's do this again. Off link dead. Character link dead. So now we need to get past auth. So I think each one of these will handle link dead in a slightly different way. Character, it doesn't care, it just flushes you. Right? It's like, oh you're gone, bye bye. Um when you get into that, that was auth. When you get into character selection, you have some state. Let's go further than this. This won't be off stream. This will be character stream. I wonder what this will do. Oh, it's not in scope. Right. I was hoping it would just undo what it did before. Now that is just a sign that yes, we're not really paying attention to these sort of stream connections at these levels. Is this stream disconnected? Like it should have panicked or something and said like, hey, you know what? There is no stream here. I wonder if we should fix that. Our filters for those. So here, instead of run auth, happens is we have this filter, and for certain kinds of things, when a stream is disconnected, we remove them from basically our connection state store. We have any sort of 
TCP styles error. That just falls. If we have an incoming message, basically unwrap it. Yeah. So it's it's no longer a result here. A message instead of a message packet. So excuse me, it's a message packet instead of a message result packet. Sorry, I'm a little distracted at the moment. I'm looking for button in Slack. Hmm. Weird. I don't know where the button is in Slack. Let's keep going. And then if we have a run character, stream connected, we do nothing with that. And if they're disconnected, false. Oh, because of a channel change, that's fine. If it's graceful, we remove them here. Uh, but we're not logging. If something went poorly here. What what happens if when we remove the connection, nothing there? Let's log that at least. Probably do the same on both both locations. If not that. Stream ID. Not sure what I would do with that, but it would at least signal that something was wrong. Now let's go back up and do the same thing up here. That's better. Checking, making sure I got that right. It's graceful, and they didn't exist. It's fine. And channel change. That's silent. That's fine.
now for the more complicated one of a game master. Now fix me. Tell player is linked dead. Because once somebody has gotten into the game, they actually stay in the game for a little while. Hmm. My friend's lonely. So we have to get past those two elements there. I think those are good changes. Let's go back to Link Dead. Not find filter constant in this to go. Oh, of course. That's on the server lib 88. Yeah, because here it's actually called something else. Yeah. Why not? Off. Strange. So in here, let's send an auth packet, auth stream. Auth packet, await, unwrap. Okay, looks like it's login, username and password. Actually, hardly ever serialize. Oh good, I did implement serialize and deserialize for this. Thank you. 
Ah, that's not it. It's messages. Where's login? It's just login. Oh, what was the type on those? Just strings? I wonder if they should be strings or stars. Incoming packet. I think it's, I think this is actually incoming message. What does an incoming message have on it? Okay, just a stream ID and then the value. And the stream ID here. Rename this to auth first. Or login. Oh, stream ID 8 is the one we're using. Login's not satisfied. Actually, let's remove packet from that. Okay, now we have that. Off packet, this should be login. Oh, it needs to be inside of an OK thing. <laughs> inside of a result. So known as an OK thing. <laughs> Packet. Or from login. So login is supposed to become packet, and the packet goes inside of the other element. So I think we need some more type info here to help it. But yeah, let's make this a packet. Call into on that, put that back. Oh, packet's not there from login? We have bytes, bytes. Huh. Ah, uh, we do it by bytes.
Oh, what about the other way? No, 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 something's wrong there. So this can go into bytes. It's fine. I don't remember how that works. Go back to LinkedIn for a moment. FCUG, thank you for the follow. Oh, hey, sorry, I had a window on top of my uh, chat window. I didn't see your questions. I apologize for that. Um, what ID and OS do I use? Uh, so this this is actually uh, NeoVim. So I'm inside of an Alacrity window, which then has Tmux in it, which then has NeoVim. Inside of that, I'm using uh, Conqueror of Completion with the uh, COC, uh, with the um, Rust Analyzer plugin installed as well. I like this setup because if I need to do this on a remote server or a specific operating system that works. Uh, currently I'm on an OS 10 box. But really, I think I'd prefer to be a BSD machine. And it kind of is, I mean. And if you aren't a Vim, I do have uh, the dot files up. Just let me know. Let's work backwards. This auth stream, what kind is that? Coming packet, result packet. Okay. Their login. Just say, okay, that's just login type. That's that struct. And we need to convert that into a packet. Let login packet equals. Into that. Should that be bytes and then packet? It probably doesn't know about this, yep. Oh, standard stir bytes, no, I pulled the wrong one in. This is bytes, bytes. Looks like we're on 05 for bytes. But that is a dev dependency to this. Server cargo, dev dependency. Oops. Undo that. There we go. Sort them.
feels like I've done this before. And it feels like I'm doing this wrong. Let's search for incoming message new. Uh, error? Oh, this was just a change channel and then message.value. Ah, uh, okay, it was already packaged up and message.value at that point. is the packet. All right. Oh, they have something for packet as from get actors. Let's go look at get actors. Oh, this stuff. Now let's do that for login. Let's double check that the outgoing packet kind has a login. Not correct. This should be for incoming packets. So we have login there. Hmm. What, what I find interesting here is that in, in the other case of get actors, what if we were trying to create a get actors packet? I, I know that this is a response packet, but if we wanted to simulate this, I couldn't. Like simulate somebody's asking for get actors. Maybe it's okay because oh, it doesn't it doesn't seem right. So in this case, we're going to get the actors. This is going to be that packet. TBR. Does this have a test below it? Yeah. We convert it into a packet. We do some comparisons. The problem is that some things have incoming and outgoing halves. Maybe they don't anymore. Maybe they don't. Let's just keep moving forward. Kind of, uh, my future self, their past self for some other reason.
get actors again. No incoming packet kind. That's in messages, so it should be at the crate. The trade bound you wait from that is not satisfied. See, these actually have numbers on them here and there. Oh, it feels dirty. Station equals two. Or let's see, a login is 25. Swap those just to have the order correct. Well, no. Oh, we need the REPR on that. Ah, oh, shoot. Oh, there it is here for that one. Or is it just from value? Yeah. Technically, didn't need those numbers on there. strip these things off of there. Ah, uh, no. Something went wrong there. There we go. I think that also means we can strip it off of here.
Link to headline four. And then 81. Oh, that might have actually worked, getting that set up. Oh, that's good. All right. I am surprised. Quite surprised. It ran two tests with no errors. Is it doing that with our, with this database? And that should have blown up. Oh, unless it's dying before it can process the message. Yeah, we're not we're not awaiting a response, are we? It's probably shutting down before the error comes. I get rid of that one. Yes, okay. Let's check our outgoing message stream. Outgoing. Let's see if we can get information back out. Ah. This should be a MPSC receiver. Is it next away or RECV await? It's RACV. So one five two oh nine. Hello. Hey, it did panic. Did get an outgoing message. Wow, look at that. I really want to know what's inside that outgoing message. So, so 15209, we are doing the next stage in that kind of marathon of getting Actix out, creating stream multiplexer, all of these pieces, abstracting the database layer out a little bit, to a lot of it. Um, we're trying to set up an integration test. One that simulates a connection and logging in, except not actually simulating a connection, but just sending a message and going through everything between that would have been between stream multiplexer and the database. 
I am cheating a little bit in that right now I am using the existing database, but shh, don't tell anyone. Just trying to simulate the, uh, the login packet coming in. Oh, and you're coming in right at the end of the stream too. Just looked up and saw the time. I wanted to see the type that was inside of there. We've got 92 for that message is that. Message dot, oh, what was it? What did we put on the, on message to be able to get those things? Coming packet. ID and value. Get the value out of it. Oh, it's not on. Oh, what about outgoing packet? Oh, we didn't put it on outgoing packet. Oh, we should definitely have that on outgoing packet. Velvet Soldier. Oh, it's easy on the ice. Why, thank you. Um, this is... This, this is... Challenger Deep. And I even changed my terminal colors to kind of match. Got just enough contrast for me. Good question. Good question. I was hoping I wouldn't have to deconstruct this. Right. Okay. Well, unfortunately, I've got a coffee date I have to hit. Um, but thank you all for hanging out. We're going to get a raid in here. Um, I know. I really wish I could do some more. I do want to. But I, I, I have some coffee with my wife. A little time in the morning and then I, I really love my wife and I love coffee so where should we raid all right well I don't know what what Fanks is doing today oh well Velvet Soldier you're more than welcome and if you do have Rust questions, just pop in Discord. We've got a couple people that are still learning Rust. Um, all of us are still learning Rust. I've been on it for about five months. Oh. Join us. Join us in learning Rust. We start the raid. Oh, what happened? That was weird. Something went wrong. Try again later. Uh, looks like he went offline. I don't know. Something's going on with the Twitch rating system. Weird. It's like one of those little things. It oddly helps in some ways. Hey. Oh, they did change the UI on this for rating. Oh, how strange. Um, well, I hope to see you all again. So until next time.